Hey, good morning, everybody. We can't call it Bible Talk from the green room today, so we'll call it Bible Talk from the silver truck. Over here in Goldsboro, the pup had an appointment, so I'm out in the parking lot waiting. I brought my notes with me here, and we're going to go through it. Today, we're in lesson number five in Journey of a Lifetime, and we're in the book of Numbers. Numbers is one of those, to me, that is a can be a tough read. It covers about 38 years as they're wandering through the desert there, and it includes two numberings of the men of war. You got chapters one through four, and then when you get towards the end, you got chapters 26 through 27. First number in here says was made the second year after the Israelites left Egypt. Then with Judah leading the way, each tribe was given a position in the march to Canaan. From this point on, Numbers is a wilderness book. It describes the future of Israel and their wilderness wanderings until the unbelieving generation died out. There's an interesting fact here that during this time frame here, Israel did not grow. Matter of fact, they lost 2,000 men of war during this time. And that's an interesting point for us to know as believers when we are unbelievers. We are wasting time, just as they did. They're just wandering around, wasting time, not doing the things that God would have us to do. And when we look further in the book here, verse uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 1 through 10, uh, then when we get to chapter 10 here, the events of this book, they begin about a month after the completion of the tabernacle. And it's a couple years after the, the book, uh, uh, after Exodus here. And it opens with a command from God to Moses to go out and take a census. And the Levites, they were excluded from this and uh, from the regulations laid down for other tribes. There's no reason given why they were singled out for this service. It may have been because Levi uh, was the tribe which Moses and Aaron belonged or because the tribe was very quick to take a stand for God at the golden calf incident that we saw in Exodus 32. Chapters 2 and 3 uh, deal with the location of the tribes in the camp. The central position of the camp was the tabernacle here, and an interesting note, it always faced east. The sons of Levi, uh, they were responsible for the care and the moving of the tabernacle there. Um, the only place the Pentateuch mentions... Uh, the Nazarites is in the book of Numbers, and that means one consecrated by God. Following the law of the Nazarites, the ironic blessing is given, and that's probably the best love passage. That's in chapter 6, verses 24 to 26 here. And then they start wandering. We start in chapter 10. It says, after being at Sinai about 11 months and taking the census, the Israelites break camp. What's an impressive picture here is... Just imagine what a million people would have looked like marching out of Mount Sinai, led by the Ark of the Covenant there. Numbers 13 and 14, it deals with spies sent ahead of them into Canaan to determine the condition of the land. And they found it to be fruitful, but they also brought back some news that was discouraging. And Caleb and Joshua, they were the two spies that wanted to go ahead and take the land. And the Two spies plead with the nation to march on and take Canaan, but the people, they're mad, and they threaten to stone them there. The desire of the people so angered God uh, that he would destroy the people if it hadn't been for Moses interceding for them. God pardoned them, and the people were forbidden to enter the promised land. Only Caleb and Joshua uh, and the new generation were, were allowed to enter there. Um, when we get to chapters 20, it starts dealing with serpents here. Uh, the people have sinned in two ways. They spoke out against God and against Moses. And God sent poisonous serpents along the way, and many people died there. Uh, put a serpent on a brass pole is what God instructed Moses to do when we get to chapter 21. And anybody looking at it would not die from the snake bites. And it's interesting here, the notes, uh, they relate that to Jesus there. As Moses lifted that serpent up in the wilderness, so Jesus has to be lifted up uh, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And those two run parallel together, and, and it's just another example of how Jesus is mentioned so many times in the Old Testament there. Uh, 
few people in the Bible are as confusing and contradicting as uh, Balaam. Uh, there, he was apparently from a pagan nation, but yet God used him as a prophet. Said he's faithful to the Lord's command by refusing to let the people uh, curse the nation of Israel. Did indeed he blessed he blessed Israel. However, in Numbers thirty one sixteen it says here we find he gives counsel to the children of Israel that results in abominations, idolatry, and idolatry. You know, when we get to chapters 26 to 36, that's the preparation to enter the land of Canaan. After 38 years, this delays over. The old generation are all gone except Caleb and Joshua. The new generation has arisen, and the fighting men are again numbered. That was the second numbering we talked about earlier here. Um, he, the interesting thing that's said here about Moses, Moses told them, uh, if they didn't go and help fight, to be sure your sin will find you out. And that's in uh, Numbers 32, 1 through 8. And that's the tribes of Reuben and Gad. They asked Moses to permit them to settle on the east side of Jordan and let the ten other tribes possess the promised land there. And it was God's intention for all the tribes to be in the promised land. Uh, but because of the desires of their heart, Moses said, hey, if you'll go in, and you help your brothers take the land, then you can return and live on the, the east side there. Uh, God offered them the best, but they think their judgment is better. How much does that sound like us today? They returned to the east side and lived, and what happened years later to the tribes of Reuben and Gad and one half of the tribe of Manasseh uh, because they were isolated, and they were the first ones captured by Assyria there. So there were... Um, um, you know, because of what they did, there were consequences for their actions there. And the last little note here in Numbers 32, 23, it says, Moses did not say, be sure your sin will be found out. He says, be sure sin will find you out. And it was an emphasis I placed on you there. Um, we all need to remember that our sins will catch up with us. Uh, not just in the life to come, but in this life as well. And I'll close with this. That's why having a relationship with Jesus Christ is so important. That's why Jesus needs to be your Lord and Savior. He will cover all of that sin. Doesn't mean we're not going to go through challenges. Doesn't mean we're not going to go through battles. But at the end of every day, we know that Jesus covers for our sin. That's what he did on the cross. That's what he did when he defeated death in the grave and Satan. And he is going to prepare a place for us in heaven. And he says he will be coming back to get us. And I strongly believe that. Y'all have a good Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, get out. See your neighbors. Get out in the community. Do something on this beautiful day today. Remember, take some time to do a mental health awareness inventory check on yourself. And always check in on those in your family and your friends around you. Have courage to ask people if everything's okay. Be available for them to talk. Be available to pray with them. Be available to go help get them some help. Y'all have a good day. Talk to you next time.